Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be building a scoreboard. Now this scoreboard is going to be for my grandma. She has a ton of grandkids and great grandkids. So to help her keep track of how many she has and also show it off a little bit, I'm making her this scoreboard. To start out, I need 20 blocks of wood using this quarter inch plywood and they need to be two and a half by four inches. Now they have all 20 blocks of wood cut. I'm gonna lightly sand these and then I need to transfer some numbers onto these tiles. Now to cut down on number of tiles I need, I'm gonna be doing a number on the front and back side of each of these and I'll be using numbers zero through nine. Now to transfer the numbers, it's really simple. It's a easy trick if you have just a regular household printer and regular copy paper. I'm gonna print out the numbers the same size that I want them to be on the blocks of wood. I'll trim those down. This just makes it easier to line it up on those blocks of wood. Now you'll also notice all the numbers are backwards. That's because once you transfer using this method, it's gonna flip whatever you are transferring and it'll be backwards. So. If you make it backwards to begin with, it'll flip it to the right direction once you're done. So now I have four of each number ready. I'm gonna start transferring these to the blocks of wood now. Now to transfer using this method, you're gonna need a water-based finish. I'm not sure if oil-based finishes will work. I know I've tried this, it works really well. So polycrylic is what I'm gonna be using today. Basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is put a nice even layer over top of the wood and right after applying that layer of finish on top before it dries or soaks in, you're gonna to wanna to place the paper with the printed side down onto the wood and press it firmly down, make sure that there's no bubbles. Now once you're done placing the paper on top of the surface, you're just gonna wanna let this sit for a while, at least an hour. I've done it shorter than that using a blow dryer, drying it out. These blocks of wood I actually let sit overnight and came back in the morning, but you should be all right with about an hour of this drying. Now I'm gonna repeat this process for 20 blocks front and back, so that's 40 times. So it's gonna take a little bit of time and some patience, but it's gonna turn out great. Now to let these dry, I would not recommend drying them in a stack. I actually took this stack somewhere else and spread them out so they could dry overnight. Now once the blocks of wood have dried, you're gonna wanna use water to take the paper off of these blocks of wood. So I'm just using a bowl of water. You can use your finger, a toothbrush, or a soft rag, something that you can lightly rub on these blocks of wood to take the paper off without removing the ink. Now the printed surface, the ink or toner, depending on what type of printer you're using, should stick to that polycrylic surface while the paper will dissolve and peel off. Now I mentioned you can use any type of printer for this. I have actually noticed that one type is a little bit better than the other. The one I'm using right now is an inkjet and it actually seems like the ink is starting to dissolve a little bit in the water. I've used a toner printer before and it works a lot better. So basically with inkjet, it, that soaks into the paper a little bit, doesn't just coat the surface. Toner actually melts to the surface of the paper, doesn't soak in at all, and that actually works better. It's a little bit more durable than the inkjet. But either one should work. You just have to be a little bit more delicate with an inkjet printer. Try not to remove the ink off the blocks of wood. Now, after soaking these in water to remove the paper, they're pretty full of water and need to dry out. I'm a little worried they're gonna warp because it's such thin pieces of wood. So I'm gonna put a couple clamps on this to hold them together and keep them straight while they dry out. I also used a piece of paper towel to go in between each block of wood to try to pull some of that moisture out while it sits. Now all of these have dried out, I'm gonna take them apart and you can see some of these still look like they have some paper residue on the wood and that's gonna actually disappear once I put a clear coat of polycrylic over top so the next step is gonna be putting a clear coat of polycrylic on the front and back side of each of these blocks of wood. That helps seal the wood and protects it, but it also protects the printed surface as well.
Now once all of these have dried, I've put a clear coat on the front and back, I need to drill out the hole that I'm going to be hanging all these numbers with. Now I've got all the blocks of wood with the numbers on them done. That's the most time consuming part of this process. I'm going to move on to create the board that these numbers are going to be hung on. So I'm also going to be taking an old picture of my grandpa and my grandma and I'm going to be pasting that onto the wood transferring it just like I did with the numbers in the center. On one side I'm going to have the text for a grand and on the other side great grand to show how many grandkids and how many great grandkids they have. Now I'm going to send this through, it definitely doesn't need to be inch thick and right now this wood is rough cut so I'm going to send it through a few times, mill it down to about half an inch thick. Now it's over to the table saw to trim this to size and to square up both sides of this board. Now to hang these numbers on the board, I'm going to be putting four wooden pegs in here so that you can have two digits on both sides, the grandkids and great grandkids. And I'm going to be marking these and drilling out a hole to put those pegs in. Now for these holes, I'm not going to be drilling all the way through. I'm going to be stopping about an eighth of an inch before I poke through the other side. Now I'm also going to be drilling two holes on the back side of this plaque at the bottom at about a 10 degree, 10 to 15 degree angle. And this is going to be for two wooden pegs that you can place in here to stand it up on a desk instead of hanging it on the wall. Now I'm going to be using some CA glue from Starbond to fix some of the wood on here. While I was sanding this down, the sandpaper caught onto a splinter of wood on the side of this board and broke it off. So I'm going to take some of this clear glue and glue that splinter back on here using some fixative on one piece, the glue on the other, and that instantly bonds it to the wood pretty well. I'm going to also fill in a little bit of the gaps that are still there with some of that clear glue make sure I fill it in completely. Now once that has completely dried, I'm going to run over this with the sandpaper and smooth that out to where you won't even notice that it was cracked. Now, if you don't want to wait, this fixative works really well to harden that quickly and almost instantly dries it to where you can start sanding. Now, while that's drying a little bit more before sanding, I'm going to take some of this dark brown CA glue and I'm going to be filling this knot. It has a crack going down the middle of the knot right here. So I'm going to fill that in so you don't even notice it and make sure that it stays solid for a long time and doesn't end up splitting some more. Depending on the size of crack that you're trying to fill with the CA glue, you might need to apply it a few times as it settles down and soaks into the wood a little bit and shrinks.
Now the CA glue is perfect for things like these wooden pegs I'm gonna be installing as well. If you don't wanna wait around about an hour for that wood glue to dry and hold it in place, this Starbond CA glue dries within minutes and even faster if you use some of the fixative spray and spray on here to harden it quicker. These two back pegs that are gonna be used to stand up the scoreboard, I'm not gonna be putting glue into this. If this ends up being hung up on the wall, it'd be nice to have those legs back there removable, just in case. Now the scoreboard's just about finished. All I need to do now is transfer that photo as well as grand and great grand for above the numbers using the same technique that I did for those number blocks. Now you can see here it works great for the same technique for photos and basically anything you wanna transfer, it works really well. Now with things like this where it has less ink than the black letters, you're gonna wanna try to be a little more careful with that and make sure you don't rub off any of the ink as well. So I'm just gonna take my time, let that paper soak and slowly rub it off. Again, just like the number blocks, I'm going to be using a couple coats of polyacrylic to seal the wood and finish it. Now my grandparents created an amazing legacy of 40 grandkids and 34 great grandkids. So now you see why she could use a scoreboard to keep track of all of us and my grandma does an amazing job of that. She's a caring, loving, godly woman that has been a great example to her kids grandkids and great grandkids so I hope she enjoys this now I can't take all the credit for this project this was actually my dad's idea he asked me to make this for my grandma for a present from him now unfortunately I'm actually really late on getting this present to her so I'm really sorry about that I hope you enjoy it, grandma now all I need to do is package this up and send it to her now, by the time this video posts, she has already received it and it made it there safely. So I guess my packaging job worked and I did a decent job at that. Now this scoreboard, you may not be thinking that you need one for grandkids or great grandkids, but this actually works for just about anything. You can change the photo that's in the middle, replace it with anything you want. And this could work well for a foosball table or ping pong table you need to keep score or something like this or a calendar. It works really well for things like that. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. If you did, hit the like button down below. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not yet already. 
Also, I'd love to hear from you guys, so leave a comment down in the comment section. Let me know what you thought, any suggestions, or if you found this helpful and made one yourself. Alright guys, that just about finishes up the video for today. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.